Well, good morning and welcome to Midweek Minute, sponsored by Hope's Point Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Rick Cochran, your host and speaker here today. And you will hear playing in the background my wife, Jill, that great, wonderful, comforting hymn, Until Then. And certainly, until Jesus returns, we're living in a chaotic and confusing and crazy world, increasingly so. And there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of... Uh, apprehension out there, uh, a lot of fear. And I hope that through these midweek minutes that we can bring a source of strength and comfort to you and challenge that uh, we are on the winning side. No matter what it looks like on the battlefield, we win through Jesus Christ. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through him. Therefore, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For we know that work is not in vain. Amen, brothers and sisters. Keep on serving Jesus because we're on the winning side and ultimately we win the war through him. Uh, this past Sunday morning, I had the opportunity to speak at uh, Hopes Point Baptist Church in 11 a.m. worship. And uh, I was wound, as we used to say down south, I was wound like a 30-day clock. God had given me a message that was just burning up on the inside of me. And uh, fortunately, the people re uh, receptive and responsive so much so. <laughs> the downside was I preached a little bit longer than I normally do. but. I appreciated uh, their responsiveness to it. And uh, both during the service and after the service, many conversations, how God had used that message. And so I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. I'm going to go back and methodically work through the points of this message with you for the next couple of weeks. Because uh, whether you realize or not, us pastors usually prepare more and have on paper more than we deliver. So we're going through asking the Holy Spirit to help us trim and, and uh, you know, to cut and to edit as we go along to say all he wants us to say, but uh, not all sometimes that we want to say, and that's probably a good thing. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, uh, I, I love to creatively title and connect uh, sermons to something that is relevant to today. And uh, God's word is always relevant. Jesus is always. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is eternal. It's unchanging. It's as powerful and real uh, and today as it's ever been in our lives. And you'll see that through this message. But yet, uh, I was thinking about how there's so much uh, news and conversation about this idea related to the COVID-19 of uh, opening up or closing down or closing, uh, shutting down, you know, whether we get sent back into our homes, whether businesses can stay open, all of these things. And it's causing a lot of angst in many ways, emotionally and physically and uh, financially, as people are just going, wow, this uncertainty is just driving us a little crazy. And uh, so I began to think about this idea uh, from a legal term, there's something called an open and shut case. And how that's defined is that when a legal case or matter that is on the surface looks like it's easy to prove or to decide because the facts are so clear and compelling, it's called an open and shut case. Uh, the problem is due to human nature, uh, due to unforeseen situations or evidences or circumstances with the advancements in technology and and what have you sometimes an open and shut looking case is anything but it's very complex very drawn out and uh, usually when the judgment's finally given people are divided on the validity of it but there are some open and shut things related to our spiritual lives that have a great degree of certainty to it one certainty is is that satan wants to shut us down. He wants to shut you as a believer down. He wants to shut down the church of Jesus Christ. He wants to shut down missions and ministries and, 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 and service to mankind. He wants to turn the light out and remove the salt influence upon this uh, planet. And uh, certainly the Spirit of God wants to open us up 
to fulfilling the mission of Jesus Christ worldwide. And so I'm going to read some scriptures with you, and I'm not going to rush uh, because this is going, going to take place for the next several Wednesdays, God willing. But in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, And the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says, He who is holy, he who is true. This is our holy God, our truthful God speaking to us. He who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. God is in control, folks. He opens and closes doors that no man can open or close back. I know your works. I see I have uh, set before you an open door. Now, we'll come back to that in a moment. An open door and no one can shut it. No one can shut down the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, the only way the church of Jesus Christ can shut down, really, is if the um, members of those churches just make a decision to retreat, withdraw, and, and throw their hands up and say, we can't do this. And uh, certainly that is not an option. Jesus said, I came to build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So let's remember, we are involved in a victorious organism, organization, of Jesus Christ, and that is his church. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. And then he goes on, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, uh, in John chapter 10 and verse 3, uh, we add to this, Jesus speaking, saying, to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Jesus leads us all the way, the old hymn says. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. The sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If any man enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief, speaking of the adversary devil, Satan, does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. One last thought on this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, Paul is dealing with a lot of adversity, a lot of uh, mitigating circumstances related to effectively carrying out the work that God had called him to, uh, to this particular group of uh, people, this church in Corinth. And he's talking about always expanding the mission field and uh, never retreating, but moving forward. And he said in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, For a great and effective door has been opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Honestly, I don't think we're just trying to play positive thinking here to say to the church, this could be our finest hour. This could be the opportunity that is disguised in obstacles that is truly the time the church can step up and see revival sweep this nation and this planet if we will recognize the great and effective door that comes. We've got to look for it sometime. And so th that's just kind of a scripture foundation. I'm going to introduce a thought then I'll wrap this up. Uh, Satan's shutdown or lockdown on earth. How does he attempt to do this? Number one is confusion through fabrication, deception, distortion of the truth. If you remember in the garden, uh, God had clearly defined the parameters of uh, obedience and blessing to Adam and Eve. And out of everything in creation, he said, just don't touch this one tree. And so Satan gets uh, Eve fascinated with this tree. That's our human nature. You can give somebody 99 things and they want the one thing they were not given. And how did he get Eve to succumb to the temptation to disobey God? He distorted God's word. He spoke five words to her, 
four of those words were true. 80% of it was true, but that's how effective he is. He twisted the word of God. He said, you know, yea, as God said, but then he said, uh, you know, thou shalt surely die. Go back and look at that when you get a chance. And, and he added one word that changed it all. And through that deception, that confusion, that fabrication, Eve was led astray, that led uh, Adam astray, that has ended up with the devastating consequences. Now, Jesus comes, he's baptized in Luke chapter 3. In Luke chapter 4, he leaves that scene, goes into the wilderness, filled with the Spirit, it says, led by the Spirit, and he's confronted by that same Satan, and the same tactics are being used. Uh, he is twisting the Word of God to confuse Jesus and to bring Jesus to deny the truth of God's Word and obedience to God the Father. But Jesus correctly interpreted and applied the Word of God, and he won the day. And one final scripture in 1 John chapter uh, 2, and I close with this. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. And that's one of the problems. Us Christians, we get so attached to this world. And when it gets rattled, we get rattled. God's not rattled, but we're rattled because the world's rattled. Do not love the world or the things in it. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father's not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, there's a three-pronged tactic, Genesis 3, Luke chapter 4, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And this world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Listen, open up to the will of God, to the work of God. Instead of kind of withdrawing and stepping back and going, I'm going to kind of wait and see what happens. Listen, thrust forward in the power of Jesus Christ. We ought to be witnessing more we've ever witnessed, giving more we've ever given, serving more we've ever served. Listen, keep on keeping on because until then we have a mission and when he returns we get the reward. God bless you and have a great rest of the week.